No, I don't think so. I mean, it's just about finding a balance with the car out there, which is no different than an indie car. You're just trying to find a balance. Um, um, you know, all you're doing in an indie car is trimming it out. And you know, if I could have more downforce in these cars, I'd probably take it. Because you know, in an indie car, we learned we learned very quickly that it's about how much throttle you could carry around here. So, um, you know, you can definitely use a little more road in these cars. I feel like I feel like I wish I was using more right now, but. Um, you know, cars are getting very low in the corners, and you know that can be a little bit of a little bit of a danger in an indie car, especially if you get just a little bit too low um, and uh, get a little loose. So, um, so uh, that's a little bit different, I suppose, but nothing nothing terribly unexpected. Um, it did feel a little funny driving through Gasoline Alley, though. <laughs> I'm used to walking, so. And I'm used to seeing the uh, alley cats, and I didn't see them either. And uh, I just saw a bunch of yellow shirts, and that was nice, but, um, but um, I didn't see any alley cats. OK, so uh, the N Indy 500 next year, I would love to do it. Um, I've said that all along. I love this track. I love the race. I've had, you know, I feel like I've had really good races. I feel like it was always one of my strongest races of the year in IndyCar. So um, I feel like uh, that's something I would love to do. And um, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. But I can tell you that the only way it's going to happen is if it's with um, someone that I really feel like we can go out there and have a shot to win. Because I think it's unfair to the history I've had here and to my memories to do anything, any, anything less than that. Um, I wouldn't want to wreck any, anything I've experienced here with something to take away from that. So, uh, so if, if we do it, it'll be with, uh, with the shot to, to be able to win. Um, on top of that, there's just a whole lot of logistical issues, of course, to, to, to iron out if that were to be the case. But um, first and foremost, good car. And then the Randarita. OK. Uh, the Randarita, I think, is it's Bacardi. It's. Uh, Sprite Zero and Crystal Light, I think. It tastes like, it just tastes like straight sugar, which is delightful. <laughs> no. Logistically, this is not exactly the best layout for stock cars, I feel. And it's, be it's because they use the hauler so much. And um, I don't think it has anything to do with the track. It's nothing to do with that. It is hot here, so that's just the time of the year. Um, and, and it's also been like the hottest summer I can remember. Um, that's a bit of the, the issue. It's hot, and it's just the truck is so far away from the garages. So I feel like logistically, it's just a little bit of a pain in the butt for them. So, um, but I've, I've, I'm determined to make them all love it and to make them see what I see. Uh, so um, I think I'll get them there by the end of the weekend. Uh, it was a car that was built by Funkmaster Flex with um, one of my sponsors, Peak, uh, sort of commissioned the whole thing to come together. It was for a TV program. And uh, I got it here at Indy at this track. And I think it was a 67, right? 67 Camaro, I think? 67? Something like that. Anyway, it was old. So um, it's, uh, and I got it here at the track, and we shot a little piece about it, and it was b cherry red, like fire engine or cherry red, and uh, it had a number 16 with a circle around it on the, on the side of the door, sort of like a little bit, um, sort of not a bright white one, but a sort of faded look. Um, so yeah, it was, that's, that's my story of a Camaro. So it's actually very, appropriate that, that I would have that story and that you would ask about that. Um, it was very cool to see the unveiling of the, uh, of the new uh, Chevy Camaro today and um, for the Nationwide Series. Um, it's a great looking car. Tony Jr. and I were sitting next to each other and said that, dang, that pace car is a good looking car. So um, maybe, I'll get, maybe I'll have to get one of those in the future. And they say that the yellow shirts are pretty strict, strict around here, but I'm like, I see all the yellow shirts, and they all like wave and hug me. So, you know, I say you just have to be really nice to them. You have to smile, wave, how you doing? I just, just show them some love. That's you right. know, that's that's what I always did around here. And then, you know, I come back and they hug me. So, there you go. I think the best thing about coming back, and I got in last night, is that um, it feels familiar and it feels comfortable. And um, I'm always happy. I like woke up this morning and. 
you know, push the blinds up in the bus. And I said to Paul, I said, it feels good. Ah, this probably sounds like a stupid, like a story you wouldn't believe, but I'm like, it feels good to look out the window and see Indianapolis. You know, it's like the whole words, you know, the words there because it's across the, um, when I look out my bus from the bus lot. So I like seeing it. I feel very comfortable. It feels familiar. Um, you know, I just feel like I've had a lot of different experiences here that, that could help me. And, um, I, I don't know. And I think it's like, it's just this own, it's just this special place where, uh, you know, I feel like from the beginning, I've always really believed that you have to show this track respect and it will hopefully show you the respect back. But, um, you know, I've always thought that it's, and especially in an indie car, this place can bite you pretty big. And I, I don't think it's too much different in stock car, to be honest. I don't, I, I don't want to find the wall. I, I, I haven't found the wall and I don't want to.